Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother, Part 19, on Thoughts and Difficulties. Question from a Disciple to the Mother. When one comes to you, one tries to be at his best possible, that is to say, to have very good thoughts. But often, on the contrary, all bad impulses, bad thoughts that one had during the day come out all on a sudden. Mother, perhaps to be got rid of. If they come, you can make of them an offering and ask to be freed of them. That, perhaps, is the reason. It is because the consciousness acts to purify. It serves nothing to hide things, push them into the background, and imagine that they are not there, because a veil has been put in front of them. It is much better to see oneself as one is provided one is ready to abandon this way of being. If you come allowing all your bad movements to be out on the surface and show themselves, if you offer them up and say, well, that is how I am, and if you have at the same time the aspiration to be otherwise, then this second of presence is quite useful. Yes, in a few seconds, you can receive the help necessary to get rid of them. Whereas, if you come like a little saint and go away satisfied without having received anything, it is not very useful. The consciousness acts automatically. It is like the ray that brings light to the place where there was none. Only what is necessary is to be in a condition when you do want to give up the thing, to get rid of it, not to cling to it and keep it. If you want sincerely to pull it out, efface it, then it is very useful. Indeed, on my part, I could put a question. Why? I do not know if it is general, but in any case. Why do you wish to have good thoughts and be at your best when you come to me? For what reason? Disciple. To have bad movements in front of you, it is very ugly. Mother. If you want to keep them, yes, it is very ugly. But if you want to get rid of them, it is perhaps an opportunity to get rid of them. It is surely an opportunity to get rid of them, because in front of me they appear exactly as they are, whereas away from me they are colored with all kinds of brilliant and false lights, which make you take them for what they are not. When the movement is vile, and you see it in my atmosphere, it appears exactly as it is. Then it is the moment to get rid of them. To give the best one has is quite nice, and is much appreciated. But to give the worst that one has is much more useful. And perhaps it is even an offering that is appreciated more, on condition that you give it to get rid of it, not to take it back again afterwards. Question to Mother. What do you mean by the words, when you have difficulty, widen yourself? 
Mother, when I have difficulty, I speak naturally of the difficulties on the way of yoga. Incomprehensions, limitations, things that are like obstacles preventing you from advancing. When I say widen yourself, I mean widen your consciousness. Difficulties always come from the ego, that is to say, from the personal reaction, more or less egoistic, that you have towards circumstances, events, people that surround you, and the details of your life. They come also from the feeling of being shut up within a shell, as it were, which prevents your consciousness from uniting with the higher and larger realities. Because you may very well think that you want to be vast, you want to be universal, that all is the expression of the divine, that you must have no selfishness, you can think many things. But that is not necessarily a cure. Because very often you know what you should do, but you do not do it for one reason or another. But when you have to face an anguish, a suffering, a revolt, a pain or a feeling of powerlessness, does not matter what, all the things that happen to you on the way, and that are precisely the obstacles, then if you can physically, that is to say, in your body consciousness, have the impression that you are widening yourself, unfolding yourself, don't you feel that you are something altogether folded? fold upon fold like a piece of cloth folded, refolded and folded over again? Then, if you can feel that what immobilizes you in your movement is like a piece of cloth folded too tight, too fast, or like a packet much too tied up, much too closed, and little by little, slowly you straighten the folds, and you spread yourself out. You make yourself flat and wide, as large as it is possible for you to be, stretching yourself as far as you can, opening yourself, relaxing in an attitude of complete passivity, with what might be called the face towards the light not to bend double upon one's difficulty, not to fold yourself around it, enclosing it, so to say, within your person, but on the contrary, opening yourself out as much as you can, as perfectly as you can, presenting your difficulty to the light, the light that comes from above. If you do that in all the domains, not merely mentally, for sometimes it is difficult and you may not succeed in it, if you imagine that you are doing it physically, almost materially, well, when you have at last unfolded yourself, spread yourself, then you will perceive that three-fourths of the difficulty is gone. After that, just a little work of receptivity to the light, and the last quarter will disappear. That is much more easy than to fight with the difficulty through thought, because if you begin to discuss with yourself you will perceive that there are arguments for and against, which are so convincing 
that it is altogether impossible to extricate yourself without a higher light. In the other case, you have not to struggle against the difficulty. You do not try to convince yourself. You simply open yourself out before the light, as if you stretched yourself on the sand in the sun, and you allowed the light to do its work. That is all. Another question to the mother. What is the easiest way of forgetting oneself? Mother. Naturally, that depends upon each one. Each one has his particular manner of forgetting himself, and for him, that is the best. But evidently, there is a way general enough which can be applied in various forms. It is to be busy with something else. Instead of being busy with yourself, you can be busy with somebody else, or some others, or with some work, or with an interesting activity that needs concentration. Here also, it is the same thing. Instead of turning back on yourself, contemplating yourself or fondling yourself, if I may say so, as the most precious thing in the world, if you could widen yourself and be busy with something else, something which is not exactly yourself, then that would be the simplest and quickest way of forgetting yourself. There are many others, but this one is within the reach of everyone.